So over the last couple of videos, we've been cementing the concept that at every point on some function, there is a slope or relationship between the variables of those functions that we've thought of as being represented by some kind of tangent line, some kind of line that represents that point's value and has that slope intersecting at whatever point we're looking at. But the tangent line, just like the slope at every point that we're looking for, hasn't really been clearly defined yet because we haven't yet found a way to find the ratio in the increase of one variable to the other one at a single point as a result of the math that we've been using. However, we are familiar with another kind of rate calculation, which involves two points. And we've talked about this. This is called finding the secant line on a function, where we take two points and take the slope between them. I'm going to name these points. These points are going to be x and, oops, this, this goes outside a little bit, but this point, this point is going to be x plus some difference between the two, right? This is going to be some, uh, just there's going to be some distance between these two points. So that's going to be the delta x. And to find the slope between these two points, we just take the ratio of the increase of the corresponding y values for these coordinates as a ratio to these x values. So we're going to have the points, the function, right? y is equal to the function of x, the function of x plus delta x, and the function of x. And we can just write that out as the function of x plus delta x. This is just basic algebra minus our y value at the other point over the x point itself, x plus delta x, the point on the x-axis that's, that's called x plus L, uh, delta x, minus the point on our x-axis that we're just going to call x, just some point x, some point on the x-axis. The point is that this one is different from it. And this is our slope, right? This is our slope of this secant line. If we, uh, and that might be important to lay, label, that this is the secant line. But what we saw in the last video is as we make this interval smaller and smaller, we are basically accounting for what the secant line basically measures, which is kind of an average or consideration you can think of, of all of the slopes at all of the infinite number of points in here. And that as we change the size of the interval that we're measuring from, if we make this smaller, we can get a more accurate representation of the kind of slopes that we're looking for in the area of the exact one that we're looking for here. I'm going to make these points a little bit more obvious. So how can we really use this mathematically though? As we move the two lines from which we're taking the secant slope closer and closer to one another, they get closer and closer intuitively and so somewhat mathematically, just kind of intuitively mathematically, to the slope at that one point that we're looking for. So how, how can we make this perfect? Because we can get pretty much as close as we want, right? But we're never actually going to reach there, because if we reach there, we are just going to be measuring the slope between two of the same point, and we're just going to have f of x minus f of x over Essentially, well, let's simplify that, actually. I'm going to simplify this whole thing, right? Because x plus delta x minus x can be simplified to, I'm just going to erase this, just delta x. Oops. That's delta x. We're just going to get 0 over 0, f of x minus f of x over 0, because when our two points are the same, the interval between them is going to be nothing. And so this will be 0 over 0 ambiguous.
However, we do know that there's a slope at that point, and that until we reach that point, we were getting more and more accurate about measuring it. So as we got this, this point here, let's do that in a different color. Let's use green. So we got this point here to move closer and closer to this point here. The slope that we are looking for of this secant line here, this thing, got closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line that we're looking for. The slope at one point. We're basically getting closer and closer to considering that one idea. So we get closer and closer, we get more and more accurate. And you can see that visually, and it makes some sense, and we'll get into that more. But what does this remind us of? Because to me, that sounds a lot like a limit. If you recall limits, they were that subject earlier in the calculus videos that sounded a little bit non sequitur, but will come into a lot of use now and in the future. So what did the limit describe? The limit described this essentially between two variables here, what one of them got closer to as the other one got closer to something. So as you can think of it from this example, as x plus delta x gets closer to x, which requires that delta x gets closer to zero. So as delta x gets closer to zero, then the slope at one point is what we'll get closer and closer to measuring with our secant line. So our secant slope, I'm going to say our secant slope goes to our tangent slope. It gets closer and closer to it. And the limit essentially takes this and says, hey, what if, if your delta x is going to zero, then what is your secant slope going to? It's going to the tangent. And it finds that essentially. It finds what your what what that second value is approaching. So how is this apl applicable here? Well, we do have a formula for the secant slope, and our delta x is indeed approaching zero there. So if we just took the limit, and write in cursive, the limit as delta x goes to zero, we're not making delta x zero, we're just making delta x get closer and closer to zero, this value up here should get closer and closer to being equal to our tangent line. And this is actually the formula for the slope at one point. But how does that really make that much sense? Because, you know, that seems mathematically solid. We, we've talked about limits in the past and they seem legitimate. But how can we really understand this? How, how does a limit, though it seems reasonable, really represent that idea of the direction at one point? And how can we think of this in a slightly less obscure way? That's what we'll be uh, talking about shortly.